I know what time it is. But I love this. This is called the Kingdom New Testament. Uh, one of my more favorite translations. It's just not in. I'm lobbying for it to be included in Bible Gateway. <laughs> it's just not there yet. So this is what he says in Ephesians 4. When Jesus went up on high, he led bondage itself into bondage. <laughs> Whoa. We normally hear he led captivity captive, right? But it's a little harder to understand. But the very bondage the enemy was trying to use on you, Jesus arrested him and put him in jail. So he led bondage into bondage. <laughs> and he gave gifts to people. And without studying this, you might not know that Paul, who wrote this, was just quoting one of the Psalms. Okay? It's Psalm 68. 18. And I'll tell you, I had a little time under, hard time understanding this verse because I didn't really get the part of giving gifts to men. And, you know, some of the rest of it in that chapter was a little hard to understand. But here's one way of looking at it that I studied and I feel confident has merit. It's, uh, it says in verse 9, when it says that he went up, what this means is that he also came down. That's Holy Spirit. Think about it that way. And now just go back with me to Psalm 68, which is Old Testament, right? What would people in the Old Testament have thought the psalmist was saying? One translation could be that Moses went up. And what did Moses get when he went up on the mountain? The law. And he came down. And he brought them the law. So Jesus went up. And what came down? Holy Spirit. See? That's Pentecost. That's what the Jews celebrate on Pentecost is Moses going up and getting the law. We celebrate Day of Pentecost is Holy Spirit coming down. So isn't this a beautiful thing? He gave gifts to men. First of all, he locked up the devil and took the one who had you locked up and locked him up, distributed the spoils as gifts to men. And we all have those gifts. And, and, and what came down to the lower place where we are is the Holy Spirit. The one who came down, Holy Spirit, is the same one who went up. See, because it's the spirit of Jesus living in us. Yes. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is an equal part of the Godhead. Yes. So he distributed himself to all Christians all over the world. Yes. Not because we deserved it, but because he loves us. Yes. And because he does great exploits through broken vessels, doesn't he? Yes. And vessels of clay. Pots of clay. We're cracked pots. <laughs> <laughs> the one who came down is the same one that went up. Yes, above all things, so that he might what? Fill you and me. How many of you fill with Holy Spirit? How many want to refill? Come on, right? That's how it works. It's not just one and done. God loves you just like you love your kids, and you want them to have the best. Amen? I'm going to finish now. God, it's hard. There's so many good verses here. I'm going to go to the last, the last one, okay? It's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Um, the gifts, you know, you could look at another part of Ephesians 4. It's a, it said he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. How many saints we got? Everybody here? You can qualify as a saint. How many would like to be equipped? All of us would like to be equipped because it's, it's so meaningful. I'm, I'm actually writing a chapter in a book right now for Doris Wagner, who's Peter Wagner's wife, 87 years old. Still going out and speaking at conferences. <laughs> toughest lady, other than Trisha's mom, toughest lady I've ever met. Never complains. Incredible. And the, and the, the title of the chapter is called Finishing Strong. Because that, that was the book her husband was working on, Peter Wagner. He wrote 75 books. This was going to be his 76th book. And he died in the middle of writing that book. So she decided to finish it. And she asked me to write the chapter on Finishing Strong. Well... He wrote a booklet when he was 80 called My Fourth Career. <laughs> oh, isn't that awesome? So, I mean, that should give you hope as a Christian that if, if you're 60, you're hitting your best days. You're not slowing down. You're wiser. You're like good wine. You get better with age. You're much wiser, unlike cheese, which starts to stink with age. But we're like good wine. Amen? You believe it? So there's these gifts and for the equipping of the saints. And how many know at 60, you might have a lot more wisdom than you had at 20? So maybe you've learned a few things over those 40 years. And you can put them into practice. So you don't have to retire as a Christian. Peter Wagner, Doris Wagner, like I said, 87. She's still traveling around the country doing conferences, teaching at conferences. She's had a leg amputated. 
She's in a wheelchair. She doesn't care. She's going to advance the kingdom until her last breath. Her husband, I saw him two weeks before he died in the hospital, and you could tell, you know, he didn't have long to go. John Price was telling jokes. He was laughing, you know, like just a funny guy. And um, as we were leaving, John was crying because he said, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to see you again because I have to go back to Jersey. And he knew I was staying another day. And he looked at me and he said, uh, when you come back tomorrow, I want you to give me a summary of what they talk about at the meeting tonight. <laughs> I'm telling you, he never stopped learning. He didn't want to stop learning. He thought he was going to get healed and get back on his feet and get out of that hospital. And why wouldn't you? What's the harm? You don't have to give up. Just believe God. He's a miracle working God. You'll never have to be depressed. Now, look, if you are, it doesn't mean you don't have a reason to be, but God will break you out of that thing. That's why we say it so many times, breakthrough, breakthrough this morning. So I'm just going to have you stand, and we'll finish reading this together so you don't get too discouraged about how late it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I cut out about seven slides, so I'm really, this is good for me. <laughs> Again, this is Passion Translation, okay? So it's just rich. I really like it. So I encourage you to read it. It's Ephesians chapter 3, and we'll read it out loud together. Ready? I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory. And f Now, just do me a favor. Can you look at another person while you say that? I'll, I'll say it, and then you repeat it. Because I wanted you to say that you're praying this over somebody. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor. Now, let me just ask you, do you believe that? Do you like the person you're speaking to? Because even if you don't like them, it would be good if this happens. See? So either way, you win. <laughs> All right, now here we go. Keep repeating. Look at the person. Until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. <laughs> then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. This is the best part right here. You ready? Drum roll, please. Look at that person. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our hands. Thank you, Lord, for the richness of your word. Thank you that it nourishes our hearts. Let this last part be so true that you would release that, that life of Christ deep inside of us and that the resting place of your love will become the very source and root of our lives today, Father. We're so grateful for the relationship that you have and that you're not distant and far away and shut down and closed for business. You never slumber or sleep. You're always there for us, Lord. Anybody here who's discouraged today, we ask you to break off that discouragement off their lives. Give them hope again in place of hopelessness. Give them the beauty that you have for ashes and that joy for mourning, Lord. We ask you to do the great exchange in all of our lives, not for our glory, but for your glory, that we might be weapons in your hand, equipped saints that are about the Father's business. We want to be like Jesus who said, my meat is to do the will of the one who sent me. And as the Father has sent me, Jesus said, so I send you. So be sent out of here today with the joy of the Lord. Amen. Love you all.